Most people are probably more experienced expressing existence through the language frameworks of science, chemistry and physics. Yet the godfather of the scientific method, Aristotle, he believed in the energetic realms because that was the only way they could at the time express existence. So you might laugh. Some people kind of, when people talk about the five elements of consciousness or existence, think it's a bunch of hocus pocus, but this is actually what the people who invented logic believed in. So you have to give them a wee little respect because it kind of makes sense when you're feeling into what reality is about as opposed to logically working out. So whereas the language of science helps us understand existence on a very more accurately it's a bit it's a bit easier to express it on an energetic level because it's something that people can directly experience within within a few months as opposed to studying all the knowledge in the universe and quite honestly humans don't have all the knowledge in the universe so you're not actually going to understand existence and yourself and the universe through studying science anyway because you don't have all that information Mysticism is kind of like a cheeky snorkel that won't explain it perfectly, but you kind of get a feel for what we're going for. So different mystical traditions use energetic elemental systems. Judaism, Christianity, yoga is the best for raising energy. Taoism is the best for healing. I use the tarot cards to express the symbolism of the elements in the energetic world so far makes sense so all of this is just really just an expression no matter how you describe existence it's literally just figure of speech and so I'm, you know, so I'm going to be using this is one of the tarot cards but this presentation isn't exactly about tarot cards I'm just using the tarot cards as an example so all the systems we always start off with the earth realm some of the different traditions go in the order of earth water fire air earth air water fire earth air fire water uh, i'm using earth air water fire and then there's a fifth element which in short we're just going to call it spirit because that's how i understand how consciousness works. So starting off with the realm of earthly existence, so this is the world of nature, physics, money, health. This is how we tend to describe the modern world. The earth element symbolically represents it the best because it's something that we can touch, it's something we can taste, we can smell. We know what earth is, it's in the ground, the place the planet we live on is called Earth and it floats in space. It's quite easy to understand what we mean to be Earth. In, in terms of consciousness, the Earth element is the furthest away from the point of origin. It is the manifestation of all the other energetic realms before it. The, the best language we have to describe earthly stuff is through the science, is through the language of science and physics. Engineers, they tend a lot of effort in describing the physical world. In we, in the earthly realm, experimental ex scientific experiments, scientific method, experimental physics is the best way of understanding what we should do and how to do things. There's a difference between scientific method and logic. Science is induction, logic is deduction. So when you're trying to work out something, your logic can be flawed. The premises can be wrong and therefore the results you get are going to be wrong. Where with the scientific method, we, kind of, we accept, well, we don't 100% know the answers. We don't know everything. There's a degree in certain, but this is what we think is best. So you might have a back problem and doctors might go, well, the logical thing to do is give you painkillers. In reality, that doesn't fix your problem. So sometimes we then have to go folk Go to folk medicine, sometimes folk medicine is wrong, sometimes folk medicine is right. It's a matter of experimentation. So the, there's an extreme materialism when people are obsessed with results. The results of action is utilitarianism. 
collecting material objects seems to be their main motivation in life and this that's kind of empty because obviously the material world as we will soon discover is an illusion the extreme side of anti-materialism is just rejecting the earthly realm and therefore you it's very difficult to manifest things out rich it's rich people find it easier helping the poor because they can give into charity than people who don't work people who people just wanted to will and reject the material realm. So, there you go. If you want to master, if you want to expand your consciousness towards all the energy systems, you have to deal with the earthly realm. So, if you want to start your spiritual path today, start off with deep breathing, abdominal breathing, pranayama, exercise properly, diet properly, and earn money. That is how you master the material realm. There's also exercises people can do to connect with earth energy, specifically the trees, shamanism, Taoism does it pretty well. There's different energetics goes off to different ways. Shamanism is probably the fastest and easiest way to do it. So this material existence, we tend to think that this is existence itself. The definition of reality is the way the world is regard uh, regardless of what our mind thinks it is so material existence actually is not reality it's just our perception of reality what the buddhists call maya so it's an illusion it's just one expression of possible existence and we can see that th that through time people's experiences of the physical realm has been different depending on their understanding of it we can see this through art People get more realistic, realism, people get more abstract, surrealism, real, surrealism, and obviously the Egyptians and the Greeks, they had their different philosophies and actually changes and starts the proportionality of their art. So that brings us then to what kind of, what constructs the earthly realm? Well, the earthly realm is constructed by our language. So this is the air element. We, so this is language logic, science, not necessarily science, more logic and our experience and our ideas, our memories, our belief. It's the problem solving, but it also causes problems. Air as an element goes up and down. Earth doesn't really go up and down very well. Air goes up and down. So we get this concept of higher and lower lower chakras higher chakras morally wrong morally right but this too as you start understanding the air element we start understanding the energies in your mind these are all just illusions so the earth element is created by the illusions of your air element so one of our favorite characters of philosophy represents the air element is Jesus. I don't come in peace, I come with a sword. This is representing the new era of logic and reason. Buddha was obviously the best yogi of all time. He was the master of the mind. Of course, Aristotle, Socrates, you can go on and on naming different philosophers. So when we have the idea of something is fixed, our language, we can, our language always describes things are fixed. And this is how we get our fixed view of the physical world. Things, we, we only express things in terms of things are fixed. And this creates energy blockages. So we can solve problems this way, but we can also block energies and cause more problems for ourselves if we become attached to our, our, idea, our ideas. These are two different extremes. So value is inherently just an internal projection. We're trying to understand existence and ourselves. We use the air element to have higher and lower, good and bad. But when we get obsessed, it causes problems, and that obviously causes problems in the material world. In the material world, our ability for logic and reason came after emotions. We you we can use logic and reason to balance out our emotions and manage them more properly realize that that the basis of our um, emotional problems is silly and therefore it's easier to solve them that way in terms of music if you can think of the earth element can be represented with the drum it's like the rhythm and the st main structure of music 
the air element can be represented through the actual expression of notes themselves. Um, in, in modern music, the benefit of Pythagoras was that we, he helped us express music better through logic and science. But that means our music then gets stuck with these you know, 7 to 12 notes when actually music is an infinite number of notes. So why do we have, so we have this logic reason, so this air element is coming from the water element. So the water element is representing emotions, energy expansion is constantly changing shape. We felt emotions before we could think of things. We felt things before we could understand what we're feeling. Our reptilian brain was created first. We were designed to fear and hate things. Then our mammalian brain came and went, oh, wait, no, some things you have to love as well. And then our rational mind helped us understand what to love and what to hate or how to balance out these things. So our main motivation of having the earth and the air elements is so in the emotional realm, we increase our level of happiness and feeling good and we decrease or avoid the bad feelings as much as possible. That tends to be what people call right and wrong. Not all the time, but it, that is the tendency what the bees like. So we like the idea of water expanding. It always goes to the path least resistance. It can be powerful, it can be soft. The wave goes up and down. Everything is just energy. Energy moves up and down like a wave, like they're going to flow. My favorite philo one of my favorite philosophers that represents the watery element would be Bruce Lee. He was like, be, be like water, my friend. That kind of idea. So imagine in the realms of consciousness, water is like the ripples. We, like water is a very good representation of movement itself. Well, there's many different energetic schools you can learn. For me, the best with the master energy and particularly the water elements would be Taoism. So what created the ripples in the first place? Well that would be fire. So the fire element represents pure consciousness while it is moving. So it's passion, it's desire, it is what we call three true well, true will. It is the motivation behind all action, thoughts and feelings. If you have enough fire, if you have enough passion, if you have enough consciousness, if you have enough desire and drive to get something done, pure consciousness will destroy any amount of earth, mountains, or immovable ideas. So the character that represents fire consciousness the best is Shiva the Destroyer. Yeah. Um, so he is pure consciousness destroy six ideas. So we have the earth realm, we have it fixed, very hard shape, it's constructed by the air element, our motivation to do that is coming from the water element, because the water element kind of wants to know which is the best path to work out. And the fire element can just smash these things and says, fuck it, there's no such thing as right or wrong, it's looking bad, I'm just, I'm just going straight to the point, smashing that mantism away. So we go back to the time of the Cainites and the rise of the fire gods, the rise of the sky gods. We have All, who is the father of the Elohim, of the, all the other gods, all the other elementals. And so this idea of this fire consciousness is a source of all the other energies. And from this idea we get Hebrew El and in Arabic Allah. This is the evolution of that kind of the, those kind of energetic systems so for me the best ways to connect with the fire consciousness for me has been sex and music that's what gets me passionate that's how I connect with my passion so the fire element is consciousness is, mo is moved it's consciousness starts to move just the, the fire element causes ripples Creates shapes, creates forms, creates ideas. Boom, we get the physical realm. 
But before that, how the hell do we start describing what happens before the before the elementals? A lot of people just go, ah, there's four elements in the energy world. I'm, I'm not even going to get to the fifth. Well, in tarot cards, we just go, oh, it's spirit. Essence of everything. Eek. Um, it's nothingness. It's emptiness. Buddhism, shunyata, you can go, in yoga, akash, wu wei, and Sufism, gayab. We, it's really hard to describe emptiness and nothingness because we describe it as it's not a thing, but it is a thing. It's just no thing. It's the things before those things were things. Going back to the physical world and using the language of science, we don't have language for nothingness. We just kind of go, oh, before everything existed, uh, there was no science. Language didn't exist. It's very hard to describe something because once we express it, the nothingness disappears and is replaced with a thing. Because a language is some kind of a, it's a more of a denser element. The air element is denser than the nothingness. So I would experience emptiness and nothingness as the subtlest of energies. So you think as energy goes up and down, up and down, everything in physical existence peaks into existence. And it actually disappears and troughs out of the physical existence and goes back up again. That trough is nothingness. Where everything came came out of its ultimate potentiality is nothing, but yet it can be anything it wants to be. The more silent the mind is, the better you can hear music. If your mind is not silent, if there is no emptiness, music can't exist. So, in terms of music... It's silence. Water is kind of harmony and chords and the tonality. Fire is the intention behind the music. Silence is quite essential. There is no music yet. There cannot be music without it. It's quite a difficult concept to grasp because you can't grasp it and it is lack of concepts. Hence the Arabic phrase la ila ila la. There is no God, only Allah, because whatever, however you express God is a concept and therefore cannot be God. Because universal consciousness is everything in existence. Therefore, difficult to express. And this is why we have tower cards, music, art, science. Because we're trying to express this thing that we live in. Like fish trying to describe what water is, it's extremely difficult. I have more theoretical physics books to read through. I used to study physics. I need to have a, a balance of left right brain, right brain. You need to, it's a good idea to have a good scientific view of the world, but yet that kind of corners you into a very structured belief system. Therefore, we need to balance that rationality with mysticism and get a feel of what the universe is like. Feel it first, and then we start thinking about it. Instead of just saying, this is all that there is. There's more stuff to it. I can tell you that your consciousness can leave your body, and it can expand, expand. Because in reality, time and space is just an abstract concept. The entire existence is actually still I'm not moving. It's just consciousness moves through itself... And gives the illusion of time and change and space. But anyway. <laughs> until we get that far in expressing that. There is these five elements. You can. Some people have eight. You can make them up yourself. This is one particular expression. This is my current movement. And anyone wants to contact me at republicofzen. Or on the gmail.com. I had to develop these ideas even further. My website, republicofzen.eu. Crack this universal conscious buzz because it's nonsense. We're all one. <laughs> but the energy is manifested in itself and it has the empty space that is consciousness. Is Sometimes it's a little bit trapped between different energies and gives us a concept of the illusion of separation, which is a construct of ideas. And, which is, and those ideas are motivated by fear 
most of the time. And so we can heal our entire being on different energetic levels of physically eat better mentally we can start structuring ideas emotionally start understanding we're all one and then our emotional reactions are better and, and then our motivations to do things can be helping people instead of and so then our energetic alignment and everything and we get first wholeness in ourselves and developing wholeness in relationships health beauty love with the community and blah 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 the world and then Fly over to aliens, conquer them first, take the resources, and then get them to love us. Um, maybe not, but at least at least have sex with aliens. Hey, right, so I digress. Um, okay. explore your consciousness, explore the universe. It's far more interesting than the limited belief system as expressed in movies, newspapers, and my most hated radio. <laughs>